uh, you can hear me well and uh, i think the previous lecture was also on epi epilepsy and i hope this will uh, uh, make my make my task easier because i think dr abid was also talking about seizures but also uh, but that was perhaps in uh, childhood seizures he was talking about so we will start with uh, with how what epilepsy is what seizures are what how do you define epilepsy and how do you define seizures and how do you what is the international definition so we will be initially talking about then we will talk about the different types of seizures and then management so uh, beginning with uh, uh, we define seizure we define seizure as uh, we define seizure as uh, as transient occurrence of, of signs and or symptoms due to abnormal excessive and synchronous neuronal activity you have to you have to understand that seizure does not occur normal neuronal activity is 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 normal uh, is weird most of the time it is programmed so the, it, your neuronal activity may be in your control or it may not be in your control. For example, automatic nervous system and your voluntary nervous system, your voluntary activities and your involuntary activities. So your voluntary activities are controlled by your will and involuntary activities like control of inside systems of all the systems like beating of heart, like breathing, like, uh, like movement of gut, all these activities, they are planned activities and programmed activities of the of the brain and they um, cannot be considered as abnormal so they are normal activities and they and uh, other type is voluntary activity which is again under your will according to your wish so when the activity becomes when the this neuronal activity or electrical neuronal activity is abnormal when it is not due to uh, not with not in, neither it is programmed no nor it is voluntary then it is abnormal again another quality another quality of this activity is excessive uh, if you want to for example move your hand you have a, a control of that hand you do not overshoot it you do not jerk it many times you do not repeat that activity so uh, activities which are when, when the activity neuronal activity becomes excessive number three is all the neurons which are performing abnormally or which are performing or which are performing excessively much more than what is required for an activity this activity is synchronous too so abnormality excessiveness and synchronous they, they all lead to to a powerful movement which manifest as seizure in uh, manifest seizure as clinically so uh, the so these are three characteristics that they are abnormal they are excessive and they are synchronous uh, neuronal activities. Based on this, we define epilepsy as is a disease. Uh, this is one of the, your viva question. What is seizure and what is epilepsy? So epilepsy is disease of the brain defined by any one of the following conditions. At least two of the two of the unprovoked or reflex seizures occurring more than 24 hours apart. Previously, this reflex or reflex has been added recently in the definition. And you all must be, it may not, it may not be in your textbook. I have not recently seen, but it may not be in the uh, in your textbook, but it has recently been added to the definition. Two unprovoked seizure was always a known definition of uh, epilepsy which means that a temporary 
any temporary condition, for example, hyponatremia, hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, trauma to the head, bleeding inside head. These are all temporary conditions which irritate the brain and they, and they, can, lead to, uh, they can lead to seizures. So you do not call these conditions as pro, you do not can call these conditions as unprovoked and you do not label them these conditions which are temporary occurring or one time or few days even. You do not call them uh, unprovoked and you do not call them epilepsy. But reflex seizures are different. Reflex seizures are sort of uh, sensory triggers which may, uh, which may lead to seizures. For example, photic epilepsy or sound uh, or auditory epilepsy. So these are, uh, there are certain conditions which can lead to with the, which can lead to seizures. For example, a person who is sitting in 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 uh, in uh, uh, flickering in flickering lights, and those flickering lights provoke seizures. So this is uh, normally this is not a this is not a these flickering lights are not a pathological phenomena, but brain has tendency to be irritated by these. So this inherent tendency of the brain uh, to be irritated or to be pre to be stimulated by certain normal phenomena which are not which are not uh, provocative for the seizures for other people is is defined as reflex seizures. I hope you got it. So this, uh, uh, this uh, now we define these uh, because reflex seizures are not pathological conditions. So we define it to unprovoked or reflex seizures occurring more than 24. So it may be unprovoked seizures or it may be reflex seizures. Both of these, if occurring more than 24 hours, hours apart, this is our first definition of epilepsy. Similarly, one unprovoked seizure, but after you have investigated the patient and you find that patient has abnormal, uh, abnormal brain, any brain structural abnormality, like for example, congenital, uh, congenital uh, malformations or previous stroke or not something which is not currently, currently the cause of, but it is there present in a structure and you may predict that this patient will develop another seizure. So in those conditions, because he has developed, he or she has developed seizure now, because of the presence of this structural abnormality, this patient may develop seizure in next 10, uh, 10 years, has had a chance, you again call it epilepsy. Then diagnosis of epilepsy syndromes, I think, Previously, when, uh, when I hope those of you who attended pediatric epilepsy uh, lecture must have known various uh, epilepsy syndromes. Most of the epilepsy syndromes are defined in children and are very few, very few are defined in adults. Mm. So coming next to the, what are the clinical features? Talked about the clinical features and signs and symptoms occurring. So the, the, this depends on location of epilepsy, epileptic discharges. For example, a person with occipital seizures may have, uh, may have visual symptoms of epilepsy. A person with, uh, co with auditory complex, auditory cortex seizures may have. A person with motor uh, cortex uh, focus may have motor phenomena. So it depends on how where, where the location is of the abdominal discharges is. Number two, how, how, uh, um, how much that abnormal discharge propagate to involve other parts of the brain as well. So the two, these, uh, it depends on, and, but the key features are stereotypy and transients. Again, an important point to consider: we are when we are because these two, these two, uh, these certain points which I am explaining you in definition in detail will help you in forming differential diagnosis and help you help you in differentiating uh, differentiating epilepsy from other 
syndromes or infectious or dead corners. So, stereotypy number one talked about it they should repeat themselves so more than two seizures number two the more all these two seizures or more seizures they may be stereotypic for one person epileptic phenomena or epileptic phenomenology which we now we report as epileptic phenomenology should remain the same it should always be same for the a person for example if a person presents to you with generalized tonic clonic seizure cannot present to you with just occipital type of seizure or just visual seizures only uh, if uh, if that is the uh, true epilepsy syndrome so stereotypy is so all the seizures are stereotypic more or less same syndrome it cannot be different signs and symptoms every time seizure occur or every time a person loses consciousness or loses awareness number two is they are always transient they cannot continue to occur so all these when all those phenomena which, which occur continuously cannot be epilepsy for example a patient comes to you and reports normal movements example tremors or say for example chorea if these if since these disorders they continue to occur most of the time or most of the time of the day tremors or or they are permanent they, you cannot classify them as seizures seizures is the uh, is a is one of the key features so what we have learned by this time that seizures more than two and an abnormal occurrence of normal causes to manifest at seizures at least twice 24 hours apart number two they must be stereotypic and number three trans they should be transient whatever the whatever be the location or whatever be the extent of seizure but they should be stereotypic or they may be transient then uh, what are main, main epileptic phenomena how do you differentiate epilepsy from other impairment or loss of consciousness we we know that but all these it is not necessary for all these phenomena to occur in a sa in same type of seizure a person may not lose consciousness or may not lose awareness and still have seizures so impairment or loss of consciousness then abnormal motor phenomena it is again not mandatory for for you to diagnose seizure and the patient may may not have motor phenomena psychic or sensory disturbances and sim and even perturbation of the autonomic or nervous system i have written down this in in uh, order of decreasing uh, frequency most common is impairment or loss of consciousness then abnormal motor is occurrence then psychic and sensory disturbances are compared Rare and autonomic seizures are extremely rare and they are very difficult to diagnose. Then uh, we talked about all these things which are occurring, for example, abnormal movement, abnormal motor movement, paresthesias, abnormal autonomic function. So they are all added, added features. They are positive symptoms of epilepsy. But we must also be aware that negative symptoms of the epilepsy they, or negative symptoms of seizures, they do also exist. For example, recurrent transient blindness may be a part of occipital lobe seizures. Leaker, recurrent focal paresis, focal weakness of one side of the body or one arm or uh, one arm and leg or one leg only may again be a part of epilepsy if it is transient and if it is occurring uh, if it is occurring at intervals. Uh, then sudden brief focal loss of tone, for example, myoclonus. Then uh, episodic loss of memory. A person is normal. Uh, this you do in again here, you will differentiate loss of memory uh, caused by dementia and loss of memory caused by epilepsy. How do you differentiate? What is the, what should be the key feature? 
we should be transients. We talked about transients. In, in dementia, a person has continuous or progressive loss of conscious or uh, loss of memory but in um, but in epilepsy if amnesia occurs it is always transient it occurs for a short period of time then aphasia is feature we shouldn't stop talking for some time and this can uh, they, we call it a speech arrest episodes of a speech arrest they occur and a person is normal after some time with normal speech. How do you differentiate it from stroke? Uh, because stroke, uh, aphasia or slurring of a speech continues for a period of time before improving. It is not a transient. Uh, transients is the is the key feature. Uh, to the classification of seizures, this is the latest classification of seizure, and we all now must uh, made, make ourselves aware. Uh, the many many textbooks do not give this trans uh, tra uh, this classification, but it is widely available on that. And if you want to download it, you can uh, find it anywhere. So now uh, we have uh, we have three class three major classes of seizures: focal onset generalized onset and unknown onset. Again, focal onset may be aware, focal onset with intact awareness and focal onset with impaired awareness. Intact awareness and impaired awareness. Again, motor phenomena may be automatism. Automatisms are again stereotypic movement. For example, a person continues to uh, lip smacking, pulling on his clothes or uh, for example, making faces or whatever the whatever the type of the as we talked about, depending on the site of the abnormal discharges, whatever the person is doing is doing. So they are motor motor automatic uh, phenomena automatism. A person is, for example, if he is if he was talking about something, say today I will. Today, I will visit certain place. For example, if epilepsy or a seizure occurred at the onset while he was speaking this sentence, he will continue to say, today, 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 today. So, automatic occurrence of any mobility, which, uh, which is a stereotypical for a particular patient's speech test, and recurrent lip is smacking greatly. So automatic slept and atonic, tonic, atonic is sudden loss of tone, clonic is jerking, epileptic is spasms when they become uh, stiff and hyperkinetic movements, any and uh, bioclonic and tonic. Non motor again. All these, we, as we have talked about autonomic behavior, rest, cognitive, emotional, sensory, anything may occur with aware, intact awareness and with impaired awareness. We will see examples in few minutes. Then generalized uh, onset seizures again are motor, tonic, motor, tonic, clonic, and all this is written in your, uh, in your textbooks. Type of non-motor, for example, absences, typical absences, atypical absences. Uh, doctor, uh, the doc, doctor who was taking, your teacher who was taking pediatric epilepsy must have told you atypical uh, uh, Lennox Gastro syndrome has atypical absences. And then they are typical absences, then myoclonic epilepsies, and all these are motor uh, phenomena of general generalized onset. Then unknown onset, again, uh, we will come to the classification of unknown onset when we do not, uh, we, are when we, are, we are not aware of the aware of the onset or we cannot specify that whether the uh, seizure started focally or whether it has a it had an had a generalized onset uh, these are epileptic syndromes by defined by age uh, just for the completion there are a few few uh, 
adult onset or adolescent onset syndromes of which the most apps most famous is juvenile myoclonic epilepsy and uh, certain other hereditary epilepsies you do not know you you are not supposed to learn these syndromes by heart you have to learn few syndromes like which are favorite which are very common in children and otherwise you do not have to learn all these syndromes uh, then uh, uh, other classifications are also proposed but they are not very commonly used like etiological classification idiopathic structural genetic metabolic immune unknown and then uh, according to the network that uh, it, whether it belongs to the cortex or the limbic lobe or the thalamocortical or, or arising from uh, cortex and brain stem then anatomical frontal lobe epilepsies front temporal lobe epilepsies parietal lobe epilepsies and so on so uh, coming to focal onset seizures focal onset seizures as you can see the graphic representation of these seizures they start uh, at a particular focus in the cerebral cortex spread to the to the ipsilateral cortex and do not cross the midline if they do not cross the midline they do not lead to impaired awareness uh, usually uh, if they cross the midline if they reach to the brain stem only even then they can lead to impaired awareness so focal originate they originate with an neuronal network limited to one has hemisphere uh, and they may be aware with intact awareness and without impaired awareness then uh, these focal onset seizures may become generalized we call them to focal to bilateral tonic when there is when this complete loss of consciousness we are not talking about impaired awareness in a few minutes we will see what do we mean by impaired awareness we will also show you a video uh, impaired awareness and loss of consciousness we will be talking about uh, here is a video of focal onset epilepsy uh, you can see that this patient has right sided seizure activity. His left side is open. His head is turned to his right side, and his upper right upper limb is stiffening. Uh, he is not able to speak, but is able to comprehend and is uh, and and at the time you see that he's even responding to his nurse. See, uh, he is uh, pushing his hand uh, with his left hand, but he's not controlling his, uh, he is not, he cannot control his right upper leg. That is jerking. He's able to hold the, uh, hold the hand of his nurse with the left hand. So this was, he was aware throughout. He could, he, he could push the hand of the nurse away and he remained conscious throughout the, so this is focal onset seizure with intact awareness, intact awareness. This is another type of seizure in which uh, this girl had this, you can see these chewing movements. These are, these are auto, these movements are not, these are an example of automatism. She's not chewing anything. She is just making these movements. So this is, and you can also see that he is doing semi-purposeful movements like uh, pulling on his clothes, pulling on her clothes, uh, putting her hands uh, below her thighs. I mean, sort of semi-purposeful movements. And uh, actually, these movements they they do not mean anything, but they are occurring. Repeated. Uh, you can see that his chewing movements are continuing throughout the throughout the uh, episode. The, she uh, she appears to be conscious, but she's not in fact responding to what is being told to her. She's even making faces. Comment ça 
She appears con confused, smiling, smiling in inappropriately, unnecessarily correcting her clothes. Now, now, after rubbing his, her nose, she has regained her consciousness. Now she is responding to the nurses. So this is a focal onset seizure with impaired awareness. She, she appeared conscious. She did not lose her consciousness. She did not lose her posture, but her awareness was not there. So this is an example of... This is an example, another uh, case of focal onset seizure. You can see that this woman is describing her visual aura. She is describing her visual aura. We were talking about focal onset seizure with bilateral involvement. She has visual symptoms on the right side of her body. Now, you can see her head turning to the right. She had seizures. She had visual aura in her right visual field. Head is turning. Head is turned to the right. So it was focal onset seizure, but. Now the patient has lost her consciousness and the seizure has become generalized. You can see jerking in all four limbs. They are more pronounced in left, right, but they are occurring in both uh, on the occurring on both sides. So this is uh, this is this was this type of seizure, focal to bilateral tonic-clonic. It had focal onset, but it later become uh tone, bilateral tonic clonic seizure so we have seen three examples the first example was of only focal onset with intact awareness second was focal onset with impaired awareness this was focal onset with generalization or bilateral tonic focal onset with bilateral tonic clonic seizures coming now to generalized seizures generalized seizures they originated some point within the brain and rapidly engage bilateral uh, distributed net networks. Again, they may be of motor, tonic, tonic, and types. So uh, this is an example of, you can see the EEG running with this, and it is indicating that you can see that there's no focality. In the previous, in the last video, we saw that seizures started on the right side and they were more pronounced on the right side. Although they occurred in both, they, although they, those seizures involve both sides. But in this condition, seizure is occurring <clears throat> bilaterally and symmetrically. So, This is called tonic, this is called clonic jerking. You can see that it is started with myoclonic type of jerks, then tonic stiffening, then jerking. And now this is tonic stiffening. This is tonic part. Sometimes seizures only consist of this part and there's no jerking. And so most of the time, but most most of the time, there is clonic jerking as well as tonic stiffening. So the component may be only clonic jerking, only tonic stiffening, or the combination of the two. Uh,
So this patient only had myoclonic type of seizures. This is another example of continue look at his hands when I start with you. Look at his hands that myoclonic seizures may be as, as uh, brief and as, uh, as small as this one. L continue to focus on his hands and you will see, notice the jerks. So this is myoclonic epilepsy. You saw the other example in which the myoclonic jerks were very prominent. Patient had whole body myo, nearly whole body myoclonus or involved all four limbs or and it may be as brief as this one in which only the hands jerked twice. This is an example of absence seizure. I think Dr. Abid covered uh, childhood seizures, but to complete the type of, because those were motor type of seizures and this is non-motor type of seizure. This is absences. There's no motor activity in this. You can see the child is not aware. He's absent. These, uh, these seizures are briefer than what we saw in focal onset, focal onset epilepsy with impaired awareness. And they do not, they are usually not associated with automatism. They are very brief and they usually occur in children. They are very rare instances where adult absences have been described. So uh, mostly they occur in children less than 12 years of age. Then Coming to unknown or unclassified seizures, when we do not know, uh, can be can, uh, seizure of unknown onset can be classified as motor and non-motor. We do when if information is inadequate or if the seizure cannot be categorized, then seizure is considered unclassified. Uh, all these differential diagnoses, <coughs> they can be considered in the differential, all these syndromes can be considered in the differential diagnosis of, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> um, can be considered in the differential diagnosis of seizures. For example, syncope, uh, TIAs, excuse me, please. It can hold TJ Syndromes can be described as it can be included in a differential. For example, syncope, because it is associated with transient uh, loss of consciousness. Again, a TIA, uh, which is associated with any neurological de deficit lasting for a few minutes. There are differentiating po points, but due to lack of time, I won't be able to give you in uh, differentiating points. However, do you think that I can tell you that, for example, syncope, it's usually associated with change in color and uh, usually as soon as the person falls to the ground and the blood flow to the brain is restored, the consciousness is, is regained. And usually it is not associated, is usually not associated with any tonic stiffening or clenching of teeth or <clears throat> things like that. Again, TIAs, uh, they do not occur repeatedly. If a person is having TIAs, usually TIAs are not stereotypical. And number two, they are soon followed by a stroke. So it's difficult to decide that. <coughs> difficult to, it, it is uh, easy to decide that those were TIAs and not a stroke. Metabolic derangements are provoked and cannot be classified as migraine with aura comes in the differential diagnosis, migraine, not uh, common migraine, but migraine with aura comes into the differential diagnosis of epilepsy. <clears throat> uh, then we were talking about non-epileptic seizures. Uh, this is an important differential diagnosis and we must, uh, we must know the points which favor the, here you can see a woman, uh, with non-epileptic seizure.
see the plant fall. She did not hurt herself. The plant fall. And this fall is continuing. There is no posture. Uh, and the fall is continuing. And there is no, um, no jerking, no step thing. Patient is lying comfortably in a certain posture. And uh, there are no uh, phenomena. Then, uh, how do you diagnose? The most important thing in the most important uh, thing is in the diagnosis of epilepsy is a detailed history and clinical examination. A detailed clinical history uh, should include um, does the patient have any warning of attack? Warning of attack, what does it imply? It implied that if there is warning of attack, then perhaps the attack is of focal onset before because patient could feel that warning and there was no loss of consciousness. So the, if there was warning of attack, so if, for example, if a person says that he starts seeing certain objects or he starts seeing certain, hearing certain objects or in case of gustatory aura, they are, they are able, able to feel certain taste in their mouth or sometimes olfactory aura, like, like uh, they start uh, the burning tires, burning rubber aura is the most common olfactory aura. So uh, they start feeling smell of, uh, smelling certain tire, burning tires, but those are not present. So if there is any warning of the attack, that means the onset is focal because patient was able to feel the onset of attack and there was intact consciousness. That's why he remembered that the, the how the seizure started. Uh, then we must ask about the ictal phenomenology during a, uh, attack. How can we do that? Most of the time when our patients, because because generalized seizures are more common than focal onset seizures. Most of the patients are have impaired awareness of contact or contact uh, consciousness. How do we? How do they can? How can they uh, tell us that what happened during their uh, when they were unconscious? So an eyewitness account or recording of the seizure is ma is mandatory. Now we know that most of the people uh, around us have. Uh, mobile uh, cell phones which, uh, with, 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 which can capture videos and we can ask our patients, we can ask uh, the attendants of the patients to get their video recorded while uh, the uh, seizure is on Then uh, you can see this, they can be brought to your clinic or your uh, OPD uh, when the patient presents to you. Uh, first, the able, patient able to contact during the attack if he was able to contact during the attack, there are two possibilities. Either the seizure was the focal onset with it, without any impairment of awareness or consciousness, or the seizure was in that condition, the seizure should be unilateral. Mm -hmm. And if the, if the seizure was bilateral, or the patient was unable to move both limbs, but still could contact, then perhaps it is pseudo seizure because it is not possible for a person to have bilateral seizure and yet get his consciousness remain intact. Then recollection of the attack later. Was the patient able to find, is able to tell you some of the things which he was, for example, sometimes warning of the attack is not told immediately by the patient, but is told later. Then feelings of attack, feelings after attack. Most of the patients, they describe either they are confused after the attack or they may have headache or they may have severe body aches. Those who had even patients with uh, non-motor seizures may have severe body aches because except, because of excessive neuronal activity, neurons become tired and they become fatigued and patient has a feeling of fatigue after the Attack. So feeling of fatigue, headache, tiredness, and confusion, they support the diagnosis of true seizures. Then duration to normalize. 
normal seizures they usually last 30 usually seizures last 30 seconds to two minutes usually uh, then duration of attack uh, again uh, pseudo seizures may last many minutes as we just saw in a video that even after three minutes the lady was lying in the same position as uh, as at the onset of the attack uh, then frequency of seizures uh, what are the precipitants of seizure and what is the response to treatment response to treatment is important because uh, that is how you define that that is how you define that uh, this epilepsy is responsive to treatment or refractory to treatment then uh, electroencephalography is is used to support and not to exclude the diagnosis. Uh, as many as 50% patients with active epilepsy may have normal EEG when performed between the attack, in between the, during interictal stage. So uh, EEG, if it is positive, if it is showing discharges, like epileptic discharges, it help you in the diagnosis. But if it is normal, it does not exclude the diagnosis. It, it's, it bet, its better function is to classify epilepsy. Say, for example, if you clinically think that patient had focal onset seizure, but uh, on EEG, you can see the discharges are generalized. Or vice versa, if you think that patient had sudden onset loss of consciousness, but you can see focal discharges in, the e, in, uh, in EEG, then you can, you, it is easier for it. Then there are certain childhood syndromes which have specific typical epilepsy. We talked about a, a Lennox Gestalt syndrome in which atypical absences are classified according to the EEG appearances. Then, inter, then ictal video, EEG telemet telemetry, uh, is the most sensitive and specific test for epilepsy, and it should be reserved for diagnostically difficult cases. So if this is, again, one of your viva or your MCQ question. If you are allowed to do only one test for to support your clinical diagnosis, what is the more test? That, that is ictal video EEG monitoring. You subject the patient, patient with frequent seizures. You subject the patient to continuous video monitoring along with EEG leads on the head of the patient and you watch that patient uh, through telemetry and you uh, correlate the clinical phenomena occurring, for example, whatever jerking or with the EEG of the patient. So this is, this is done while the patient is having seizure. So patients are admitted in the hospital for a certain period, say 24 or to 48 hours, and they, have, they are monitored. And this is the most sensitive and test, uh, most dense, uh, sensitive and specific test for epilepsy to date. But since it is very expensive and also require hospitalization, it is usually not used routinely. We uh, often ask the patient to describe the phenomena. We take an eyewitness account or we ask the patients to record their seizures. Uh, usually, most of the cases, 90% of the cases can be diagnosed in this manner. This is how EEG looks like. Uh, there are four types of EEG uh, waves. It is not uh, delta, theta, alpha, and beta. Alpha is normal rhythm of the EEG. And uh, uh, you can see that there are spike and wave discharges. There are various various other type of discharges, spark and slow wave discharges. And uh, you can, uh, this is at the moment beyond the scope of this lecture. Uh, magnetic resonance imaging is the modality of choice. Uh, it, when we consider imaging for epilepsy, when you are suspecting some secondary etiology, for example, in an adult onset epilepsy, you cannot ex you cannot label that epilepsy as uh, as idiopathic unless proved otherwise. Uh, then, computer topography, uh, CT scan also has a role in the urgent assessment of seizures. For example. When uh, MRI is not available, when MRI, when the patient is too restless to be put into the prolonged for the prolonged position, uh, procedure of magnetic MRI, 
then we usually uh, take the help of CT scan. But uh, modality of choice is uh, there are investigations that be that can be done to uh, exclude the uh, differential diagnosis of uh, epilepsy, include EEG and halter monitoring. Sometimes a sometimes bradycardia or asystole mimics epilepsy in that it can, or arrhythmia, serious arrhythmias or bradykinesia may lead to serious falls, giving injuries, patients, giving serious injuries to our patients. And uh, in that condition, if you are suspecting that, then uh, halter monitoring should be performed for those patients. Lying and standing blood pressure, uh, for example, postural hypotension may also give rise to sudden uh, syncope-like attacks, sudden fall on his standing, but then history is usually uh, is evident for that. Uh, still table testing again to find out the postural drop, serum prolactin levels, they are usually elevated in patients with general motor seizures. CPK levels again are elevated. These are investigations which are done to exclude the differential. Anti-epileptic therapy, the aim of treatment is no seizures and no side effects. Usually, the, uh, usually we must consider that seizures uh, should completely disappear or should be completely uh, resolved with the treatment. Consider side effect and uh, side effect and uh, interaction profile when choosing a drug and when to decide when to start the treatment. Uh, side of considering talking about side effects, uh, say for example, we usually avoid because of the high uh, frequency of uh, fetal malformation, we usually avoid sodium malpuric acid in women of childbearing age. Uh, similarly, uh, similarly, patients with cardiac comorbidity should not be given phenytoin because of the its potential its potential to cause uh, broadening of lengthening of URS complex and serious arrhythmias. So you consider the side effects and you consider that whether your patient is at the particular, if, if you know the side effect, you can decide whether the patient is, uh, is uh, that particular drug is, is, is suitable for the particular patient or not. Uh, first aid for, for the fish, patients. Uh, if you see a patient, if you're if you're walking uh, down the road and if you're driving down the road and you see a patient having seizure, or in any other situation where you think that patient should uh, where the medical in help is not immediately available. What do you do when you see your patient with high, when you when you see a patient with epilepsy outside your outside your hospital setting? setting? What do you do? Just stay calm and track the time. See the duration of cue. Do not restrain the person. Okay. Do not try to pull the hands straight. If, if he is jerking, if he has flexed his arm and has jerking movement, you should not. Uh, straighten those arms. You should not uh, straighten. Just uh, protect his head, remove his glossy, glossy, uh, glasses and loosen his tight neck here. Move anything hard or sharp out of the way. If he is striking, if his, his, if his jerking limbs are striking against something against something very hard, which may cause injury to the patient, you can remove that furniture or anything which is against which the uh, patient is striking and um, or remove the body, rotate the body as a whole. If, for example, if a person is is, is uh, hitting himself against, uh, jerk, if the, due to jerking, he's hitting himself against a pillar. You cannot move the pillar, so rotate the body as a whole and uh, keep him uh, safe. Then turn the patient on one side and position his mouth towards the ground, but, but be careful not to uh, not to press upon his mouth, and there should be passage enough. To, to, we should direct the mouth towards the ground in case the patient vomit and does not inhale. 
but uh, he should be also aware that his breathing is not blocked. His nose and mouth should not be blocked. They should be directed towards the ground, but they should not be blocked. Then uh, see if there is, this is usually not, not uh, being practiced in our country, but in many countries, a patient with epilepsy is given a bracelet or a, or a, a bracelet or some other uh, identity to carry in his pocket or, a, or in his, on his arm, uh, which, should, which indicates that patient is epileptic. Do not attempt to give oral anti-seizure medicine or put anything in the patient's mouth till the patient has regained consciousness. Do not try to give him water. Do not give the, I have seen sometimes, sometimes people saying that the doxa the, the, uh, we put abizamzam in his mouth so that he should regain his consciousness. He would regain consciousness after some time. And similarly, there's no use of, uh, of uh, making him spell a shoe or uh, something bad, which is often the practice in journal masses that they think that if a person with a seizure is made to inhale into a shoe, in fact, the duration of seizure is too small. And by the time shoe is brought to the nose of the patient, the patient seizure subsides. So there's no, uh, there's no science behind that uh, stupid uh, practice. So do not give anything oral or uh, anything oral in the to the patient and put or put anything in the patient's mouth. Sometimes that people, sometimes the people uh, during seizures they bite their tongue, and you can see bleeding. And sometimes people try to put something in their mouth that is more dangerous than biting. Their tongue heals itself within a few uh, days. But the, if the tongue, if any finger, the, the person puts his finger in his mouth, that may be bitten badly or if a spoon is, it may injure the palate or the uh, jaw. So the thing uh, oral or nothing to prevent tongue bite should be put into patient's mouth. Stay until patient is fully aware and help him reorient. Uh, immediately, patient should be immediately shifted to the to the to the uh, hospital if seizure lasts more than five minutes or repeat itself. Uh, by, I mean, repeat itself without the patient regaining consciousness at that time. Then, if he should be immediately shifted to the hospital, if it is known that patient had prior seizure, if second seizure start, starts before consciousness is regained, if patient is injured, pregnant, or diabetic. Pregnant because there, 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 is, there are chances of fetal harm. Diabetic because he hypoglycemia, uh, the seizure may be hypoglycemic and prolonged hypoglycemia may lead to permanent damage. If seizures occur under water, also, then patient should be immediately shifted to the hospital because that can lead to drowning. Then anti-epileptic therapy, uh, they usually uh, uh, they usually do not start anti-epileptic therapy after first seizure because this is against the definition of epilepsy. We already discussed it in the uh, beginning that we label epilepsy when you see a patient with two uh, when you see a patient with two seizures so anti epileptic uh, anti seizure therapy after first seizure is indicated only if there is previous history of myoclonus absence or partial seizures or if eeg if you if your patient reports for example, a patient comes to you with first generalized seizure, but on asking, you find out that he has history of myoclonus, or he had history of absences, or if his EEG shows epileptic discharges. Patient presented to you with single seizure, but seizure discharges are present in EEG, that will be taken as a second seizure, and he, the person will be labeled as epilepsy. Then pre-existing or congenital neurological deficit. If you think we talked, our second condition was that when patient has a high of definition, when patient has a high probability of having another seizure in the next 10 years, that when there is pre-existing or congenital neurological deficit. For example, a patient 
head uh, stroke many years back and or the patient has some congenital defect in the structural defect in the brain, then only we start, we can start anti-epileptic therapy considering that seizures would recur. That risk of recurrence is unacceptable. For example, a person is a poll worker. Uh, what if he gets another seizure while he is working on a pole? He would fa fall from the height. So if the risk of recurrence is unacceptable or there are certain jobs which, which require their employees to be, and the patient does not want to disclose that he or she has epilepsy, but he is otherwise, otherwise all right, mentally and physically. And when you are afraid that his epilepsy would become his stigma, impairing his quality of life, then perhaps you can, uh, you or the patient can decide uh, that you, uh, that anti-seizure medicine should be started immediately. Uh, these are anti-epileptic drugs. You are present in your, these are first generation drugs and these are second generation drugs. They are present, mentioned in all your textbook. Uh, uh, the only things to remember is that carbamazepine, sodium valproate, lamotrigine, labetricitam, and carbamazepine are for our drug of choice for focal onset and focal onset to bilateral chronic, chronic, chronic seizures. Then sodium val valproic acid, uh, topiravate, lamitricetam, and lamitrogen are drug of choice for primary generalized seizures or unknown or unclassified. Status epilepticus, I have covered briefly only, uh, is defined as five minutes or, or more of continuous seizure activity two or more discrete seizures between which there is incomplete recovery of consciousness. So either the seizure is prolonged and it should be more than five minutes, or if there is one seizure, there's no recovery of consciousness and yet the patient develops, uh, develops another seizure, you call it status epilepticus. Uh, here's a chart which is again present in most of the books uh, is zero to five minutes just to stabilize, uh, main, maintain IV excess. And if the seizure continues beyond five minutes, then uh, IV midazolam, lorazepam, or diazepam should be given. Uh, if it lasts more than then second anti-epileptic therapy like um, phosphatidine or sodium valproic acid or levetiracetam, they should be administered and if they if it lasts more than 40 minutes then madam, time ho gaya. sorry time ho gaya, madam Last Ji, hand. Khatam kar uh, okay. repeat the uh, second line therapy or anesthetic doses of thiopental uh, just to make you aware that what refractory uh, and super refractory status epilepticus is it refers to clinical seizures that persist after adequate doses of initial Benzodiazepine and super refractory, if it continues, status epilepticus that continues or recurs 24 hours or more after the initial. Resolve epilepsy is uh, when an age dependent self limited epilepsy syndrome after the applicable age. For example, a person has a syndrome, syndromic epilepsy, and it disappears after that particular age. Then patients who are seizure-free for last uh, 10 years with no seizure medication are considered to have resolved epilepsy. In the end, this is a slide with people, the fam famous people with epilepsy. And in the end, this is my message to you people. Uh, with this, I finish my lecture. Uh, can we take questions or not? Uh, synchronous uh, means uh, which occurring at the same time and uh, I'm sorry if my voice was low I, uh, how myoclonus is sudden jerk lightning like seizures myoclonus presents itself I have shown you two videos of myoclonus of generalizers as well as Focal myel. The stereotypy is is all the features of a, of epilepsy occurring at the same time. Uh, uh, 
uh, always occurring, similar features occurring always at, uh, for a particular person. So a stereotypical is is same features occurring. If a person has jerking, he will always have jerking. If a person has auditory aura, uh, it will always be uh, uh, myoclonic. Uh, particular, yes, person should be pay, pay, turned to the left side. And the difference between myoclonus and clonic jerks is that the clonic jerks are, are a bit longer and uh, myoclonics are are very brief and sudden as if the uh, they're described as lightning like jerks as brief as lightning very brief and sudden jerks so okay 